boy genius here at G squared tactical on a nice North Carolina Saturday morning, but it is a little chilly outside. So we had to bring it in. We're here with your gun snob free review. As you know, we try to be, I do have my glasses on this morning. Please forgive them. I am getting old and I do occasionally need them. What we will be looking at today here is my Springfield TRP operator. This does have the tactical or the, the PIC 1913 style pick rail on it. A little bit different than the traditional TRP. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a moment. The MSRP on this right now is about 1730. I did not pay that. I bought this about four or five years ago. And I think I paid out the door somewhere shy of $1,600. So the TRP standing for tactical response pistol. I will say that when I learned this was a production gun, I was quite shocked by that because everything about this gun screams handmade, custom fit, handmade. Now, I'm sure that there are some that are custom or handmade, kind of like Kimber's custom shop or whatever. Maybe some they send out to military and law enforcement contracts or something but i was shocked by that and so i'm just going to go ahead and say up front that uh, i would say with with that being said it would have to be the finest production made 1911 on the market in my humble opinion i will say also that we were saddened to learn something about this pistol recently and we will talk about that in a minute after we go through some of the features here today. So anyway, you know me, I kind of like, well, let's say that this is, they say that this is modeled after the custom professional FBI model that was made back in the 1990s when they struggled hard with other competitors to make something that would, that would sustain the torture test and the the high criteria of the FBI and this one did it without one single failure and hands down beat all of the, well, I shouldn't say this one, but the custom professional model did, but this is basically in my opinion, the same exact gun hands down won everything back then the struggle was real. You know, they really fought for those types of contracts and things. And again, they say that this is modeled after that custom, professional FBI model, but to me, I can't tell, and having done my research, that there's really any difference at all. Uh, I think they just rebranded it with a different name, in my opinion. But anyway, so you know that I like to start at the bottom. This gun is unloaded. I do have a magazine here that is unloaded for just, you know, review purposes only. So we will start here at the bottom. As you know, I like to do when you have a more traditional wedged double stack magazine, it can be a lot easier to load these magazines, kind of take some of the, I, I don't know, some of the guesswork out of reloading a wedged double stack type magazine. When you have a single stack, especially on a 1911 with it being a metal frame, it can be a little more difficult, take a little bit more practice. So they did put a nice extended flared magwell on here to help with those reloading uh, of the magazines and on the front and the rear they have 20 line per inch uh, checkering which you know i'm a huge fan of you know that springfield armory is one of if not my hands down favorite 1911 and it sickens me that some of the newer 1911s that they are making I guess to keep down on price, I'm not sure, you know, if you're going to buy a 1911, I think you would know that it's going to be an expensive purchase. So I, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. it. makes me mad, but I just cannot seem to hold on or feel like I got a, a, just a nice purchase on a 1911 that does not have front strap checkering. So this model, the TRP operator model, it does have 20 line per inch checkering in the front and on the rear. It does have a nice set of G10 grips on here that has a pattern that's almost reptilian, I guess you could say, and it does have the nice black and the blue colored Torx screws in there instead of the flathead screws, which you think, I, you know, I, I, I don't think much of. I think it looks tacky, cheap, 
And if you ever need to tighten your grips down, take them off for any reason, you always end up jacking up your, your flathead screws. So I'm not a huge fan of any gun that uses flathead screws to attach the grips. So moving on up, it does have a nice high rise extended beaver tail safety here. This gun, just like most 1911s, feels very, very good in the hand. Feels like you got a nice grip on it and, and that uh, everything's going to be okay, right? Nice extended high rise beaver tail grip on here. So moving on up, it does have a ambi tactical style thumb safety here. And as you know, I'm a little bit of a snob about that, I guess. I do not like a flimsy, floppy, loose feeling thumb safety on a 1911. I do not like one that you can easily knock off, especially if I'm carrying this in a cocked and locked situation. You don't want it to be able to, to knock off inadvertently or on accident. This is a very nice, positive, man, that is a nice, probably one of the finest filling safeties on any 1911 I've ever held. And as I said, it is ambi. It does come up into the slide, stands off nicely, serrated on the top. Uh, very tactical like, very easily to, uh, very easy to manipulate. It does have on the left side here, the cutaway down towards the mag release. I, I've heard some say that this was an extended mag release, but I don't think so because it looks standard to me. It does have some checkering on the mag release, but I do have to adjust my grip in order to drop the magazine, which, you know, I'm a little bit of a snob about that too, but on a pistol this awesome, I'll let go of that one little gripe. The, the slide lock, it does, again, it does not really stand off. It's not really tacked tactical i guess you could say it it, 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 it is kind of comes down and out away from the slide so it does have a nice little ledge there i guess and it is serrated on top of the ledge but i've definitely seen slide locks that stood off the gun a little bit more maybe protruded back a little bit more where you could more easily manipulate it without adjusting your grip again i have to adjust my grip but i do have small sausage fingers so i'm sure that there are those that do not have to adjust their grip but that's just you know again that's just me so we'll look down here at the skeletonized trigger it's about a four pound trigger as you would expect with the 1911 it does have an over travel safety or i shouldn't say safety it has an over travel stop that you can adjust it does break at about four pounds there is no over travel in my trigger and the reset is really, really nice. And as again, you would expect on most any 1911, it does have front and well, we'll stay down low here. And as I mentioned before, it does have the 1913 style tactical pick rail down here where your dust cover would be. And it will accept most any flashlight you want. I think I had a surefire on here and you know, it fits up snugly and nicely. And if I'm gonna put this on my nightstand or in my truck, you know how I feel about that. I'm definitely gonna have a light on this thing. So it does have front and rear slide serrations. Uh, sometimes I'm hesitant to even mention the front slide serrations. I don't know what it is these days with, maybe it's just an age thing for me. You know, the rear slide serrations are just fine for me. But, you know, I guess people, they must think they're cute. You know, you see people on TV, you know, out like this, press checking their guns. You know, I don't know. I, I just don't get it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the mind of one of our um, subscribers that, that, that made mention that if you don't know the condition of your firearm before you pull it out, before you holster it, before you, whatever the case might be, and you, you feel the need to do this here, then I probably don't want to be around you. I don't want to, I don't want to be around you while you're handling guns. And I tend to agree with that, but it's a thing now people like front slide serrations. So if you're into that whole thing, if you like to manipulate your slides from the front and put your hand in front of the muzzle, you know, or very close to it and have at it, you do you hoss. 
but it does have that. They're nice, candid, and they are very functional, very usable. You can grab them very easily. But again, I, I've seen people these days who I've been around a lot that 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 I've seen use firearms that were always fine with the rear here. And I see them even on guns that don't have serrations on the front, you know, trying to be, and, and I've noticed that on TV, when you see commercials, maybe on Newsmax or something like that, and they have quite a few gun commercials on there, and you'll see people, you know, press checking their guns, you know, before they put them up. And, and so I guess people must think that's cute. So, you know, you see everybody doing that now, and I just don't get it. Most guns, you can tell if it has a external in injector, which this one does not, but you can tell that kind of serves as a loaded chamber indicator. I just don't know who it is out there that is putting around in their chamber and don't remember or know that they've done that. But the front slide serrations are there. I'll quit rambling about that. So the frame and the slide is carbon steel. It has an armory coat black. Um, you know, I guess that's that's Springfield Armories. I guess that's their their um, their coating, I suppose. So it does have a tritium field front driftable Trigicon sight that came on the gun standard. I did not put this on here, it came with it. It does also have a tritium field rear sight here that is, I assume it's Springfield Armory sight. It's stamped with Springfield Armory on the side and it is fully adjustable for windage and for elevation. Some of Springfield Armory's adjustable rear sights on some of their guns I'm not a huge fan of as some of you know some of them have these real razor blade type edges on them and when you try to rack your slide back if it slips off on accident you freaking cut your hand I'm talking like a razor blade you'll cut it this one seems to be rounded off very nicely very uniformly fit to the gun and they almost seem like stainless steel when you're looking at them during the day very white stainless steel looking and they pick up very very nicely uh at night and so that's just another added benefit of of this particular gun so it does have a one piece stainless guide rod does have a stainless bull barrel and look 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 got me doing that got me doing that look at this Oh, what am I going to do? Stainless steel, five inch bull barrel does have, as I said, the very tightly fitted uh, match grade barrel, I should say, five inch one piece stainless steel guide rod. Taking this gun down is not for the faint of heart. Uh, as you get older, if you're arthritic, you're in trouble. And as you get older, you may need to call in for backup to take this old girl down. We're not gonna do that today. I did take it down earlier uh, to take some pictures of the inside as the slide and the barrel, they have some engravings and numbers in there that kind of show you that it was all one piece. So this gun weighs about 45 ounces. I believe that's unloaded. So it's got some weight on it. Put a flashlight on here. You know you're holding something, you know? If nothing else, you know, beat the crap out of something. I don't know. But it's very well balanced. And as far as shooting this gun, it has been a while since I have shot this gun. Because like I said, I've had it for four or five years. But man, oh man, like no questions asked. The best production 1911 I have ever shot. So smooth. Almost like a fine-tuned work of art as you're shooting this gun very accurate and just such a blast like you know a lot of people talk about accuracy getting on target point of aim all this other stuff i'm just saying if you held this thing out and aimed at nothing it is a pure utter blast to shoot like nothing you've ever shot before and we'll stop talking about that i think i covered most of the basics on this gun and i'll talk to you or tell you a little bit about why it is that I was so upset about this gun, why I was saddened. Uh, we just uh, 
went to an event in Clinton, South Carolina called The Gathering. It was put on by PSA, and we got to talk to a lot of the gun manufacturers. And Springfield was there. They had a lot of their 1911s out there, the Ronin. Um, I can't remember that other 1911 they have now, but none of them had front front strap checkering. And I was just asking them about that, like, come on, people, you know. I mean, come on, a thousand, it's still a $1,000 uh, pistol. Sometimes it's more than a $1,000, and you can't put front strap checkering on there. It looks cheap. My opinion is ugly, and I think that it's needed to help and aid with the grip on the gun or the purchase on the gun. So in having that conversation with them, they told us that they are no longer making the TRP, and they really didn't offer much in the way of why. Uh, they said they would continue to make the TRP in the 45 ACP with the full length uh, accessory rail here in the California compliant model, the CA model, and that they would continue to do that for the foreseeable future, but that may even be in jeopardy of them no longer making it, and I just don't understand. I tried to ask, is it because of the price point? Is it something, you know, that you don't sell them? Like, what is the reason? They were very secretive about it. So I don't know if that means that they're coming out with a newer version of it that's gonna be more awesome than this one. I don't know how, but let's hope. Here's hoping, because I'm a huge fan of Springfield 1911. Look, got me doing it again. I'm a huge fan of Springfield 1911s. Uh, this does have a very nicely polished feed ramp. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful, well-made, custom-like gun. You will not be disappointed. If you can get your hands on one of these, take out a loan. No, I'm just kidding. Do what you got to do to get your hands on one of these old girls in case they never make the thing again. You will not regret having this gun. This is a very, very finely tuned work of art. So we thank you guys for watching today. A lot of times we try to stop short of drilling down into the, you know, microscopically analyzing it or overanalyzing it. I'm sure there's things we left out. I'm sure there's things you guys know about it that you can tell us. And we really, really invite you to do that. We love having conversations with you about the firearm to the very basics that the average gun buyer cares about. We try not to be too much of a snob as we mentioned starting this video and we really 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 appreciate you guys watching today and please be sure to not only like the video but you got to subscribe set your alerts so you know when we put new stuff up because that's the only way we can continue to keep doing this we hope that you guys enjoyed it again today thanks so much for watching